In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear friends, you are heartily welcome to this Our Garden Mass for the second Sunday of Easter. And our team is assembled here. Our young Italian producer, Alessandro, who assembles this so beautifully together every week. And our loving young parents, Giselle and Paul, and our colourful young Cosmo, who is addressing you even as we speak <laughs> to the camera. Whoever you are, dear friends, wherever you are in the world, you're heartily welcome to this, our Garden Mass. As we always do, we put ourselves for a moment of quiet in the presence of our loving God, asking the Lord to look upon us and all the people we cherish with kindness and with mercy. You, Lord, are my strength and my song. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You, Lord, are my saviour and redeemer. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. This day was made by you, Lord. We rejoice and are glad in it. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy in us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. We are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of believers was united, heart and soul, no one claimed for his own use anything he had, as everything they owned was held in common. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus with great power, and they were all given great respect. None of their members was ever in want, as all those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money from them to present it to the apostles. It was then distributed to any members who might be in need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, Lord for, for he, he is good, good for his, his love, love has, has no end. end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, his love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love has no end. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, to the Lord, Lord for he is good, for but his love has no end. end. The Lord's right hand has triumphed, his right hand raised me up. I shall not die, I shall live and recount his deeds. I was punished, I was punished by the Lord, but not doomed to die. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, to the, the Lord, Lord for he is good. good. For, for his, his love, love has, has no end. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel to our eyes. 
This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give thanks, thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ has been begotten by God, and whoever loves the Father that begot him loves the child whom he begets. We can be sure that we love God's children if we love God himself and do what he has commanded us. This is what loving God is, keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not difficult because anyone who has been begotten by God has already overcome the world. This is the victory over the world our faith. Who can overcome the world? Only the man who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus Christ who came by water and blood, not with water only, but with water and blood, with the Spirit as another witness, since the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus said, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, for those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciple said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails have made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made. And unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever I preach on Thomas the Apostle, I always begin with a wonderful prose piece by Oscar Wilde called The Master. After the death of Jesus, Joseph is 
walking among the tombs in the Kidron Valley near the Garden of Gethsemane, when he comes across a disciple who's weeping, the disciple is alone. He is separated from all the other disciples. He has wounded his body with thorns. His head is covered in ashes. Joseph of Arimathea says, I do not wonder that your sorrow is so great, for surely Jesus was a just man. And the disciple answers, I weep for Jesus, yes, but not only for him, but for myself. I too have healed the leper. From the dwellers in the tombs I have cast out devils. I have fed the hungry in the desert, and at my bidding a fig tree withered away. All things the Master has done, I have done as his disciple. So tell me this, why have they not arrested me? Why have they not crucified me? In today's Gospel, the other disciples are gathered in group isolation, shielding them, not from a pandemic, but from the authorities. The brutal violence against their master has made them to go into voluntary lockdown. They've become runaways from a society they fear is hostile. So they lock themselves into what they hope is a safe house. But, 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 dear friends, notice this. Nobody, but nobody, is after them. No temple police are hunting them down. No Roman soldiers are stomping the alleyways of the city of Jerusalem, seeking their hideout. They all lock themselves in except one, <coughs> Thomas, the Apostle. He leaves the locked room behind him and walks freely in the streets. I think Thomas is the most intelligent of all the disciples. Why do I say that? Because Thomas knows something the other disciples do not. Without Jesus, they are a threat to nobody. Nobody is after them. Nobody is seeking them out. Without Jesus, the disciples are a threat to nobody. The authorities have done their intelligence work already. The local MI5. They do not rate the disciples as a force to be reckoned with without the leader, Jesus. They don't bother them. They leave them alone. That is Oscar Wilde's brilliant gospel insight. Even though the disciples lock themselves in, you have this wonderful image that they cannot keep out the pressing love of Jesus. He enters their space. He breathes on them. The disciples breathe in what he breathes out and they are enlivened by the gift of the Spirit. But one of their number is missing, Thomas. When he arrives back, he simply refuses to believe the story of the others. Thomas is part of the apostolic group, but he's a distinct individual. He has his own self. He is, I think, stunningly, stunningly modern. He cannot be loyal to the group, while at the same time being disloyal to himself. That would make his loyalty worthless. For Thomas, honesty is more important than loyalty. 
think about this. So he refuses to become part of a company of believers. He can't shelter in a faith that he cannot share. Unlike Judas, Thomas did not betray Jesus. Unlike Peter, he did not deny him. Towards the end of the public ministry, when Jesus told his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, it was a brave Thomas who said, let us go too and die with him. There's a stubborn authenticity about Thomas, which I love. He refuses to say he believes and understands when he can manage neither belief nor understanding. He's brave enough to have the conviction of his doubts, which he shares honestly. After all, the other disciples, notice, came to believe in Jesus only because they saw him. When the women came to share the testimony, the disciples all thought they were talking nonsense. So it's unfair to criticize Thomas for sharing the same reservation as his own confreres. The insistent honesty of Thomas is what makes him doubt. For Thomas to say he believed he would simply be play acting, it would be to make religion out of role playing. We call Thomas the doubting disciple. I think we should remember him as the honest disciple. Honesty is a very important quality in the Gospels and in life itself. Later, when Jesus invites Thomas to inspect his wounds, he is the one who proclaims the earliest Christian credo, recognizing Jesus as Lord and God, my Lord and my God. As Thomas is quick to voice his doubts, he's even quicker to proclaim his faith. The story of Thomas leads to this lovely beatitude, happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Dear friends, a faith is one of the important gifts of the Spirit. It has to be nurtured. It has to be helped to grow. It has to be loved into maturity. Faith is not a precious jewel that we lock in a safe. Whatever we are enduring, our faith should never be locked away. Our faith is a life. Faith can die from a lifetime's neglect when we no longer bother about it. We need to pray about our faith. Think about our faith. Educate ourselves in our faith. Faith demands our active verbs. So please don't worry if you have doubts at times. There's a long queue of us, and I'm part of the queue. Doubt is part of our makeup. But if, like Thomas, we care about what we believe in, that care in time, like Thomas, will bring us into the presence of our loving Lord and God. We believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. We have not seen, yet we believe. And, like Thomas, we acclaim Christ as our Lord and our God. We pray for the Pope, all clergy and religious, 
we ask that, like the disciples after Christ's resurrection, they may be united heart and soul with each other and with the royal priesthood of all believers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those in Ukraine, Russia, Israel and Palestine whose lives have been scarred by violence and war and ask for peace and reconciliation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who do not believe, that they may see Christ in the hearts of others and embrace him. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Thank you, Giselle. Thank you for continuing to send in your prayer petitions, and I'll read a couple of them. Dear Father Dennis, glorifying Jesus with you as we celebrate his resurrection, wishing you a very happy and blessed Easter. Enclosed, please find my Easter offering for your outreach charities and Easter cards for Paul, Giselle and Cosmo and also Alessandro, Emma and Eli with a big thank you to all of you as a wonderful team and what you continue to provide with us. Dear Father Dennis, we're writing from the USA. As faithful attendees of your weekly Mass, you and your team are our only contacts in the UK and we want to join the Masses in praying for Princess Kate Middleton as she has just shared recently about her health journey. May she be blessed with strength and complete healing very soon. I know that people all over the world are joining in prayer for her as we are among them. God bless her and her family and all who are holding her close in heart and in prayer. God our Father, we bless you, the people in trust, their prayers of thanksgiving and their prayers of pleading to us. Hear them in the name of the one you call beloved, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
friends that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior, Savior of the world. world. For by your cross and resurrection, resurrection you have set, set us free. free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, oh, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant, grant us, us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. <coughs> Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only, only say the word, word, and my soul shall be healed. Thomas Geit's Sonnet, St. Thomas the Apostle. We do not know how can we know the way. Courageous master of the awkward question, you spoke the words the others dared not say and cut through their evasion and abstraction. O oh, doubting Thomas, Father of my faith, you put your finger on the nub of things. 
We cannot love some disembodied wraith, but flesh and blood must be our king of kings. Your teaching is to touch, embrace, anoint, feel after him and find him in the flesh. Because he loved your awkward counterpoint, the word has heard and granted you your wish. O oh, place my hands with yours. Help me divine the wounded God whose wounds are healing mine. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go glorifying the Lord by our life. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, thank you for joining our Garden Mass and a special thanks to those who are helping our charitable outreach here at Redemptorist Publications. So, it is, it is goodbye from us. And thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.